I'm wondering, do you knit? Actually, when I think about it, the chances that you do are pretty low, given that only 10% of Americans knit. And while that is true, I bet that you all have enjoyed putting on a knitted sweater on a cold winter morning. For me, I enjoy knitting quite a lot. Often when I knit, my husband sees me and says, are you making knots again? For those of you who knit, you well know how dreadfully wrong he is. And for those of you who don't knit, by now you might be wondering what is the connection between knitting and science. I'm a scientist after all. Actually, the connection is quite strong with a great deal of science and mathematics behind knitting. Firstly, a knitted fabric is a metamaterial, which means that the fabric properties of it are very different than the yarn used to knit it. This is of great interest to material scientists. Knitting has also been used to visualize mathematical surfaces for many years. The Mobius strip, for example, is one that both mathema mathematicians and not mathematician knitters have knitted, although for different purposes. For mathematicians, designing and knitting a mathematical concept offers deep understanding of an abstract object. In parallel, knitters use mathematics in their designs to size a sweater pattern or to create new designs inspired by mathematical concepts. Take a stunning shawl pattern using the Fibonacci sequence. You may have seen it. It looks like a spiraling Romanesco cauliflower. For me, knitting is an extension of the polymers I work on every day. After all, wool is a polymer. In knitting, one creates a complex three-dimensional geometrical structure where every stitch has a specific purpose and functionality. The same is the case in polymer synthesis. Additionally, both require creativity, experimental knowledge, planning, and lots of patience for the creation process to be successful. For a knitting project, the choice of yarn, knitting pattern, and even the type and size of knitting needles will dictate if the piece will have the desired properties. The same process takes place in polymer design, where the choice of monomers and synthetic roots are crucial to produce a material that has the wanted properties such as strength, electricity, color, stability, height, temperature, and of course, cost. Working hard in knitting and working hard in polymer science is challenging. Failing is hard in both. It is a gloomy moment when trying on a newly finished sweater just to find out that one of the sleeves feels like a very tight blood pressure cuff on your arm. In parallel, when determining that the newly synthesized polymer does not meet the customer's required properties is extremely disappointing. However, both failures are energizing. I want to rush back to your yarn stash or lab to start the process all over again, but now with more knowledge and higher chance of success. I joined DuPont as an inorganic chemist in 1998 in the nylon business, very fitting for a knitter, working on the design of catalysts for the synthesis of the depot nitrile, which is an intermediate to nylon 6.6. This was a great project and a great introduction to industrial chemistry for me. Seeing chemistry work on a ton scale while starting to understand what is involved in getting a technology commercialized was extremely successful. And being new, quite frightening at the thought of the long list of challenges coming one's way during an industrial career. Two years later, I joined a program focused on the development of materials for organic light emitting diodes, which is a technology used in fabrication of displays. OLEDs are a sandwich of several layers of organic thin film. It is the part of the display that gives colors to the pixel. The fabrication process that we used was solution processing, where a layer is inject deposited on the top of the previous layer. Thus, limiting mixing between layers is crucial. While working on this program, I spent the next 17 years on the development of new polymers for whole transport layers. A lack of an electron, like the air gap in my shawl, where there is no yarn, is a hole. 
One challenging problem that we had to solve was to inject print these viscous polymers. By changing the architecture of the polymer chains and using different types of stitches while maintaining good OLED device performance, we were able to obtain a dense felted polymer fabric with superior inject properties with which lacked mixing with its neighboring layers. Through a lot of hard work from the whole team, we ultimately achieved state-of-the-art solution processed OLED technology. Today, my work is focused on the development of colorless poly image for the use as the substrate of curved bezel-less OLED displays. Meaning that on a smartphone, for instance, your active display would stretch from edge to edge and all non-active areas like the current camera notch on your phone display are hidden on the back of the phone. This problem is another challenging but exciting puzzle to solve, where we are using a well-known class of polymers, typically amber, like Kapton, and modifying them to the color of water while aiming to keep their typical high thermal stability. For the past several years, we have done a lot of knitting using a large collection of monomers, where the choice of stitches proves central at improving the resulting properties. With, we have made significant progress where we now have several polymer candidates that meet the customer requirements and are in the customer's hands for their evaluation. So now we've come full circle on that connection between knitting and science, and I'm sh pretty sure you can tell by now that in both knitting and, and research, it's all about working on difficult problems and finding their solutions, which I love. Working on challenging knitting problems is not only relaxing, but it's often a source of concentration to think about the next best polymer composition. While knitting my next, hopefully, best fitting cardigan. And after 22 years in industry, I have learned that the most rewarding and exciting part of my career has been solving impactful problems that are so difficult that at times I'm convinced there are no solutions. And more importantly, doing all this work as part of a team full of extremely creative, diverse, supportive colleagues, and a few of them are knitters. <laughs>